Hello, Dr. Rivera. Hi, Dr. Tony. You know, I'm so glad to be here because you've been a staff physician at Hofer Cancer Treatment Centers and uh, practice what we uh, develop over the years, the seven key principles to cancer therapy. And today we're going to talk about one of them, which is oxygenation. And when we hear oxygenation, the first phrase that comes to my mind is oxidative stress. So uh, defining oxidative stress is when the cells in our body have less oxygen. This is creating a poor cellular health. And some of the things that cause oxidative stress is environmental toxins, stress, negative emotions. And uh, I'm sure that if we can reverse the damage caused by oxidative stress, we could shift that malignant pattern that Dr. Otto Warburg Describe in the 30s and 40s. Uh, can you reference some of um, Otto Warburg's work? Yes, uh, he stated that uh, acidic environment and hypoxia or low oxygen will be the best environment for cancer cells to proliferate. Uh, he, this is one of the most important things that he discovered, and this is the reason why he won a Nobel Prize. Um, this is nothing new we know that there's always a mitochondrial disruption that produces this change of the cell. Um, this, cell this metabolic change goes from aerobic metabolism to anaerobic or glycolytic metabolism. And this is what you were just mentioning. Okay, so cancer cells don't like oxygen. They're anaerobic, they go through this uh, fermentation process to produce their ATP but it's really an inefficient battery or inefficient machine. Whereas cancer cells uh, use glucose to produce ATP in an aerobic process, which is much more efficient. So really cancer cells are survival organisms. They like that terrain of low oxygen. They like that terrain of acidity, right, that we mentioned in the glycolysis process. And so at Hope for Cancer, we tackle this uh, low oxygen at the cell level and in the tumor environment in different ways. One of them is with hyperbaric oxygen. I know that there's been several studies on hyperbaric oxygen and its effect on cancer cells. Yeah, one of the most important ones that I found, it is re related to a meta-analysis from 2006 through 2016. In this study, they stated that in, instead of having a reverse effect on the cancer cells, we can change that angiogenesis, that environment, just by giving the patients a higher concentration of oxygen. So are you saying that with this meta-analysis of 10 years, so it must have been a lot of uh, patients, right, who receive hyperbaric oxygen chamber, and that study showed that when they got this oxygen therapy, cancer cells were less prone to proliferate Correct. and to form more blood supply. Blood supply, and at the end, they will be less aggressive. So less possibility of metastasis as well. Okay, that's important because if we have that, then before that, we probably have less inflammation. We drive the programmed cell death of the cancer called apoptosis when we have uh, more oxygen stores. Yeah, what we want at the end is to shift again from uh, anaerobic metabolism to aerobic metabolism and change again the environment of the cell from being acidic to basic again. And how do you see this presenting in our patients at Hope for Cancer? Because a lot of the patients we uh, uh, work with at our clinic are tired, they're fatigued uh, because they've had a lot of aggressive therapies. Uh, you see this quite often? Yes, and also these symptoms are related to hypoxia or low oxygen. Fatigue, anemia, and, and lack of energy are mo one of the most common symptoms of the patients in, in the clinic. And I could tell you that I feel the same way from a personal perspective because I do hyperbaric oxygen treatments regularly, and after that I feel more energetic, uh, I could think clearer, my concentration, my focus is better. So we know that our body can survive months without food. 
we can survive a long time without water, but without oxygen, we could only survive several minutes, right? So uh, the fundamental aspect of these key principles, oxygenation, is, uh, is unique to the vitality and the life of the cell, right? So the cells that make tissues, that make organs, that ultimately uh, protect ourselves every day. Uh, with respect to ozone therapy as another uh, powerful uh, oxygen therapy. This treatment can be provided intravenously or rectally, and it will provide increased oxygenation in the, in the 30 minutes after the treatment. So we typically detox the patient, the lower bowels, and the liver and the gallbladder with a coffee enema, and then we follow that with rectal ozone. How powerful is that, right, when we're combining uh, different key principles to have synergistic effect? Detox, because we said that environmental toxins, stress, and negative emotions, uh, colon, sluggishness of the colon, uh, increases oxidative stress. So then we detox, and then we follow with ozone therapy. That's, that's beautiful. And what have you seen with patients? Do you see that they have any uh, side effects or any complaints with these oxygen therapies? In the years of my experience at the clinic, uh, there hasn't been any side effect. Patients can tolerate these very well. And the good thing is that they want to continue this once they go back at home. So they're trying to get a hyperbaric machine or an ozone generator to continue with these therapies. When we uh, look at another key principle, uh, non-toxic cancer therapies, where we provide sonophotodynamic therapy, PDT+, oxygen therapies will enhance the benefit of those therapies. Uh, so giving light energy in the form of laser lights, red light, blue light, green light, yellow light in particular, increases oxygen stores because we're upregulating mitochondrial function, we're increasing nitric oxide production, and uh, we're increasing the ability of hemoglobin to grab onto the oxygen and uh, increase the hemoglobin binding capacity of oxygen. Uh, what about Dr. Rivera going into more uh, uh, easier forms of doing oxygenation therapies? We have good options. We can simply ask the patient or train the patient to do some respiratory exercises, mm -hmm. but exercise as well can be just 30 minutes walking, hiking, or any kind of exercise that will provide oxygenation to the body. Right, and live green foods, how important is that to provide oxygen with these uh, nature, right? Also, not only oxygen, but we can change the pH and go from acidic, that's the cause of the problem, and try to get it a, a little bit basic and back to the normal pH. Any other studies that you could recall at this moment with respect to oxygenation? Uh, so we really understand the importance of this key principle. Yes, there's a recent study uh, from Harvard University where they look at the effects of chemotherapy and radiotherapy in conjunction with hyperbaric chamber oxygenation therapy. Uh, they discovered that oxygen reduces the rate of resistance to the chemo and to the radiation as well. Okay, so now we're able to decrease fatigue, we're able to improve quality of life because the patients are not as tired. We're able to enhance hemoglobin. Most cancer patients are anemic because of the cancer process itself. And so I'd like to quote what Otto Warburg wrote um, back in the 30s and 40s. And he said, when respiration disappears, life does not disappear, but the meaning of life disappears and what remains are growing machines that destroy the body in which they grow. So quite a, a very powerful statement, and it points to the fact that you know oxygen therapy should and is one of the key principles at Hope for Cancer. And I'd like to thank you, Dr. Rivera, for being here and sharing with us how important oxygenation is for our health and our recovery. Thank you.